can all that. So uh, one of the, I can elaborate on any little parts of that. Yeah, well, one of the things that's uh, remarkable is how you how you're able to um, to listen and 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 explain the sliding process and yeah, the yeah. readiness and how how you can okay. sense that mm -hmm. the people aren't ready and then they become ready and then uh, it, that starts with continual care. That starts with a continuous um, a daily understanding of what the situation is it's what you'll see in hospitals and nursing homes is ship changes and people changes and and people come in and have had a had, had a day over here and they're bringing that with them into this patient they may be very good and very well meaning but that's the snapshot they're seeing and very often judgments and decisions will be made on that snapshot and it oftentimes in my experience is only part of the whole it's just mm -hmm. a snapshot yeah, yeah. it's um it's not really what the last 24 hours looked like or brought you to very, very often with head injuries. That's, that was where that started for me. I think oh. working with head injuries became uh, important that it not be a quick thing, that it not be a shift change thing. Uh -huh. That I, I could spend a whole shift getting somebody listening and just letting people vent and trying to figure out what, they, what they're trying to say um, because they very often are nowhere near saying what they want to say. Right. And it's it's so often uh, reactive, and you got to dig deep lots of times to to get. And I will just I will just deviate for a second and say what I most learned from head injuries for all of us is to clean up your messes as you go as best you can. Mm. A head injury will notoriously uh, get on a loop where maybe one of their worst unresolved, unforgiven experiences is constantly replaying mm. and feeds and you were saying that yesterday weren't you about how how uh, a certain incident in your life can kind of or was it you or was it Kate maybe and can influence you know a lot of the a lot of your decisions and attitudes yeah. as you go forward try to fix them Try to try like to find PTSD. a way to let them go. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say like not, mental health. Yes, it's yes. a lot like mental health. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, and or like something in your unconscious that was particularly mm -hmm. formative, and it's gonna keep coming up again yeah, and again until yeah. you resolve it. Or and and your and your right. path yeah, may yeah. dictate that you don't get it resolved. I mean that yeah. you know you can only yeah. argue so much and you can yeah. only try so hard if you don't have the tools. But yeah, sometimes you but can. if there's that's why I go with the fifty one percent thing. Yeah. If there's a hint of of, of, of some little thing you can do that might fix this for your future, do it. Mm, yeah, yeah. That's, that's one thing I've really learned. Um, I, you usually can't find that unless you're doing continual care, I have oh, found. Yeah. I can't find yeah, that yeah. thing. Huh. I can't get an inkling of it or start huh. working on it unless I've been with that person and uh, know what might fire it, know what time of day, know what med, know what diet, know what company. Ooh, yeah. All those yeah. things, because it, it can't be articulated easily. Mm -hmm. So that probably informed a lot of old people, like your mom, who can't tell me what she really thinks. Yeah. So you have to read. You have to, you have to rely on your instincts. But you can't do that unless you have a little background, unless you have a little personal background with that person. Yeah. Yeah. To know what a good day looks like. Right. You know, to know when there's a smile, when there's not a smile, when. Uh, when the appetite looks good, know what the position looks like, um, all of that stuff feeds in. So when you think you have a pretty good handle <laughs> on all of that stuff, as the person is now, um, and that begins to change a little bit, that's when something's going on, whether the disease perhaps is moving forward, whether those evaluations I was telling you about that my mother used to make have similarly been being made by this person based on um, seeing their sister in on the phone. Mm -hmm. Different, different, different markers mm -hmm. that help her to see where her life is now and mm -hmm. be ready for what her life might be. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to add to what yes, I've noticed yes. with him is. He takes all of his experience and his intuition, but then he makes sure that he takes time to sit with it, to meditate on it, to decide yeah. about it before he takes the next step, before he's sure 
what is exactly happening. And I think so many in today's society, people don't stop to listen to that intuition, to, to reflect on all of their years of experience. And Bill has really taught me that that is the, a very important step to be able to help guide the family and, mm. and the patient as to what the next step is. Thank you for that, because that is that is a big part of it for me. Yeah. I need that time, and I can be kind of obnoxious about trying to claim it, but I need that. Oh, I thought to... that was wonderful, the way you just kind of said, my door's going to be closed now, mm-hmm. and then it's going to open at blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. I was like, oh, wow, this is you know, great. It's great. like you're taking the time you need for you, and then, yep. then when you're ready to give again. The process and, is, is, yeah. yeah. Also, yeah. yesterday, for example, okay. I really took a good part of that day as... as um, as this young lady knows, Veronica, Veronica knows here, is that... <laughs> God bless you. You Sorry, heard that coming, didn't you? I did. Um, See, yeah. <laughs> but, I, but I really wanted to know that I was clear in my own mind when you got here. And I didn't want to waste any time. So oh. I, I wanted when you got here to hear where I was at that point. Yeah. Or, you know, what I knew at that point. So that's true, because that's what happened yesterday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was quite great. I mean, we walked in and right away you were like, here's what's going on. And yeah. that was just so helpful. I was I was pretty sure of it then. So I yeah. was okay with you know. And then you and then I said, should I call my dad? And you said, no, let's give it a couple more hours. Mm-hmm. And then I could see how even then this morning it's evolved and you've been able to say, well, 48 hours maybe could yeah. be, you know. But yep. I mean, so each step, it seems like you're getting a little more clarity as things shift and you I'm not banging think... her on the knees or anything no, you know no. it's really just a matter of how she looks to me this morning and how she's acting to me this morning based on what she looked like Thursday and what she looked like on Monday yeah and uh, yeah, yeah. and it's easier to do that if you're here yeah. it that can be demanding as hell to be perfectly honest with you yeah. as I said I only got in the woods for the first time in six weeks Saturday mm-hmm. um, oh. so and that happens sometimes but it's also so satisfying that I would not do it. Yeah. You know, I would not do it. I look forward to the times when I can, you know, do other things mm-hmm. briefly. But yeah, then, yeah, then sure. I'm ready for it again. So, wow. it, it, is what you do uh, trainable? Uh, is, is it really um, <laughs> something that's unique to you and in the sense that you need like years of experience in order to? see the incremental shifts and changes where does that come from i i uh, well you're you're seeing victoria who's been here a week she's got a lot of innate natural inclinations there is a certain calling yeah i think there is i think i think what i've looked for always and there's a lot of people around like that they no, can't i got make... the cop on me sorry <laughs> yes please go ahead no. <laughs> Oh dear. It does feel uh, weird, doesn't it? Yes. It does. Shall I go and like no, it's fine. do a distraction or something? No, no, I didn't even know that did that. Okay. I'm assuming he can edit because really yeah. we're in trouble if he can. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, oh, you, I mean, I would say that you have to have a, a calling towards it. Um, and I, I found that while working in a nursing home, working night shift, um, people tend to pass more at night. And, and you're in a bare bones staff at night too and I ended up um, with a lot of passings and was did the post-mortem care and cared for the body after the passing and then the family would come in and visit with the body after the passing and then they then when they left they thanked me they thanked me for my service as if I was like a soldier or something and i would never felt such an overwhelming sense of self-worth and and like the fact that I could be of service at a time that not everyone can handle those situations, that's when I knew that this was my area because it didn't overwhelm me. It, and that's when I say goodbye to the person is doing the postmortem care. And that's when it, it brings me a, a great joy that I can, that I can do that. And, and that's why what Bill does was so attractive to me. Um, and I think what he's doing is beautiful. I think hospice is beautiful, but not everybody can do it in their own home. I think that's where I could help probably, Kendall. Well, I, I really think you have to start with a calling, like every passion. I think you gotta, you just got to know in your gut that you 
want to do this and that you enjoy that interpersonal desire to actually make it a little better if you can. Yeah. Once you have that, then I can certainly train and help in the in the practicality of running the thing, of of designing uh, of designing a facility, for lack of a better word, a home. A lot of them are hospice homes mm -hmm. that I've come uh, in contact with over the years, little here, little there. But I think there are many ways of doing it. I, as I think about it and go forward myself, I, I think it would be very easy for uh, a particular kind of cancer group maybe might want to create a, a, a home somewhere where this is only two beds because to go above two beds would involve Medicare certification, state involvement, other people's coming in and out like you already know we don't want. Yeah. Um, uh, too much yeah. commotion from people that you don't want, regardless of intention, yeah. is a distraction and an, and a an exhaustion source. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's beautifully put, because I think it, that's what my father has been experiencing for the past year. Terrible why distraction. Why he could not do it anymore. Yeah. He kept saying he didn't want all those people coming in. No, even though well he liked some not. of them very much, yes, and yes. they were lovely. Mm -hmm. That's um very. Beautifully put. How you spend 24 hours shifts and and uh, the doorbell ringing at any particular time yeah. and then what you're left to think about yeah. can really knock out a block of time that you are much more precious about in your mind. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So, but, but that can be done. I think you have to have the, you may have a, you may have two family members that really are into doing it that work well together, and that could be an extremely successful situation. You could have a partnership, an actual, you know, husband, wife, couple of guys, couple of women situation that could really come together because of it and make it work beautifully. Mm -hmm. um, there are lots of options. It's, it's, um, and it could be much more, you know, the smoother you get it, um, the, the more possibilities for profitability probably are there. It's not a great money maker, but it pays the bills and it does good work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, yeah. depends on what your motivations are. But I think it starts with a certain understanding of yourself and a certain passion to want to do it. And uh, then I could really be of help. Mm -hmm. I think if you're that person, uh, I will recognize that. I, I usually do if it's there. And uh, I trust that about me. But then there are a lot of steps you got to take to get it working. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and that depends on where you are, probably what your support system is.